Good morning, I'm Lanise Collins and this is SDG Update, brought to you from the SDG Media Zone in New York City. More than 2,000 delegates from countries, cities, businesses, and community organizations from around the world are in New York today for a 10-day meeting to consider how to speed up efforts to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. The high-level political forum on sustainable development has turned its focus to energy issues. SDG Update in the SDG Media Zone will be looking at these issues in depth. But first up, some sustainable development news briefs. The World Meteorological Organization reported that high impact weather, including extreme heat and disastrous precipitation, has marked the early part of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Temperatures were exceptionally high over large parts of Northern Siberia, and they were also above average over much of the United States, Central Canada, North Africa, and over the Middle East and Northern China. A combination of renewable energy and energy efficiency could achieve 90% of the energy-related emissions reductions needed to achieve the well below 2 degrees Celsius target of the Paris Climate Agreement, according to an analysis by the world's main organization of renewable energy, IRENA. Since 2008, off-grid renewable energy capacity has witnessed a spectacular threefold increase. Currently, up to 133 million people are estimated to be served by off-grid renewables. The number of people without access to electricity fell to just below 1 billion people for the first time, with nearly 1.2 billion people gaining access since 2000. The International Energy Agency reports that an estimated 2.8 billion people still do not have access to clean cooking facilities. A third of the world's population still rely on the traditional use of solid biomass to cook their meals. But there has been some progress. Since 2000, the number of people in developing countries with access to clean cooking has grown by 60%, and the number of people cooking with coal and kerosene has more than halved. With us here today to discuss the present state of progress on clean and affordable energy is Adnan Amin, who heads the International Renewable Energy Agency. Mr. Amin, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. And just to start off, um, what progress are we making on achieving the goals towards clean and affordable renewable energy? Well, this is a very exciting time in the renewable energy space because we are seeing tremendous progress happening. Uh, the question, is it fast enough to meet the ambition of the SDGs, is still an open question. But what we are seeing in terms of innovation processes, cost reduction, uh, capacity addition in the, private, in the power sector, uh, in terms of uh, innovation that is driving future cost reduction, uh, new countries as entrants into the clean energy space who have higher and higher levels of ambition, I think that we are at a turning point where the energy transition today is unstoppable. It's happening faster and faster. It's happening largely in the power sector, where we are having the decarbonization of the power sector through renewable energy capacity addition. Uh, renewable energy capacity worldwide has exceeded conventional capacity addition for five years in a row. And for the first time in the last couple of years, the developing countries have started adding more capacity than developed countries. So it's a very fast moving um, transition. And it's fueled by what I said, which is new forms of investment, new vehicles, cost reduction of technology. The problems are how do we begin to penetrate clean energy into the end use sectors? That's where the bulk of energy expenditure happens. This is buildings, it's uh, uh, industry, it's transportation, freight, heating and cooling. These are the big energy expenditures. And there, the progress is still somewhat slow. Uh, but have we seen a shift in the private sector in terms of where they're investing their money? The private sector is where it's happening. Uh, if you look at the power sector, 90% of investment in renewables worldwide is coming from private finance and private sector investment. Um, government investment is still important in terms of creating leverage for private investment, de-risking capital, lowering the cost of uh, investment. But essentially, the, the private sector is driving this because there is today a business case for renewables that we haven't had for a very long time. Great. And lastly, just to wrap up, uh, are there tips that you have for consumers in terms of how they can help contribute to um, energy efficiency, clean energy, affordable, renewable energy, and their day-to-day -day habits? You know, the role of the individual in the future of our life is critical. And different groups have um, started very interesting new uh, kind of initiatives. 
we've been mapping over the last year something we call procurement, uh, global uh, procurement of renewable energy by large mm -hmm. companies. So we have a lot of IT companies like Facebook, Google, Apple, which have actively started to procure renewable energy. Um, I think uh, uh, Google has declared that they will go 100% renewables. Uh, many of the IT companies will start uh, fueling their power needs for their uh, data centers from renewables. Uh, there is an RE100 uh, initiative that is incentivizing uh, renewables investments by companies, and that's driving huge investment and change. And the current uh, amount of power being procured by companies alone is equal to the power consumption of France, and that's moving mm -hmm. even faster now. But for individuals to make uh, specific choices, you need policy frameworks that allow them to make active choices. And there are a lot of markets in Europe, for example, in Germany, you can choose your utility provider, and the utility provider tells you what the mix of power is in their system. And it's extraordinary that people are willing to pay a little more for renewable power as opposed to conventional power and make that active choice. And these are the kind of consciousness we need from people, talking about efficiency and renewables, that they need to make active choices to drive this transition even faster. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Amin. Thank you for joining us. Okay. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow when we're looking at how we can make our cities more sustainable. Thanks for joining us.